Last weekend we went to Gareth and Lisa's beach house in Pringle Bay. This weekend, we're doing a little bit of houseboating and if I were you, I wouldn't even miss a minute. When I consider our history as a species, human beings have been nomadic scavenging beach bums and bush babies for far longer than we've lived in houses or had running water. If it squirted, squeaked or breathed, it invariably ended up being slapped on the coals and cooked in the great outdoors. And it's only in the last couple of hundred years or so that we've forgotten the knowledge that made us the most successful hunter-gatherers and gastronomic kings and queens on the planet. My name is Justin Bonello and welcome to Cooked. Morning. Just got to give me a couple of seconds. It's a little bit of a line on the weekend and then we are our way out of here to Langabon. So we've arrived in Langabon in the West Coast National Park and it really is beautiful out here. It's the first of spring, the flowers are out in full bloom. I've got a really nice little menu that's traditional to the West Coast. It's called Snook and I'll explain that in detail later on. Why I haven't told you where we are is because I can only show you. We're staying on the Nirvana which is that beautiful houseboat over there. Translated it means a state of bliss and I think that's what we're in for this weekend. So let's get our stuff, get out on the boat and cook up some lunch. Evan, this is where it makes sense, you know? When you think about it, this is a weekend away. Look where we stay, bro. 20 of us on this boat. Man, hey? So everyone's had a little bit of time to relax. And it's now hungry time. So I'm gonna cook up a little bit of lunch for everyone. And today, everything is really about timing. So I'm gonna start off with the stuff that takes the longest. And as I go along, I'll explain everything to you and end off with the stuff that takes the shortest amount of time to cook. We're gonna go straight into the butternut, right? This is a really straightforward way of doing things. I'm just gonna cut the top off, take a spoon, and take all the seeds out. And what you're gonna end up with is something like that. And then take a combination of spinach, parsley and potatoes and break it inside. So these have just been parboiled, sort of three-quarter done. And you can see they're a little bit hard still in the center, but that's fine. Now I'm just going to chop a little bit of garlic to sh shove in there as well. Just wrap them up in some tin foil and bake them on the fire. I'm going to ask Cassie to come and do the rest of these. So now while Cassie's doing that, we're going to bake a couple of potatoes, sweet potatoes and potatoes in some tin foil. Straightforward, potatoes, olive oil, sprinkling of mold and salt, and then you wrap them up. It's out again, because the olive oil must help it bake nicely in there. Dale, and then this is exactly the same process with sweet potato. So, Andrew, will you just do those ones for me? So butter's on guys, just close them up now and then we can put everything onto the fire. Right. Oh, okay, so sweet potatoes, will you guys bring those in? And then I think we can start them off directly on the coals, guys. Potato, potato. Now while these are cooking up, what we'll do is do the strawberries. I'm gonna make a quick little dressing for a green salad that's gonna go with everything. So I'm gonna get straight into that. Chuck it in the bowl. Andrew, why don't you turn those um, potatoes and butternut for me there, otherwise they're gonna burn on one side. 
Now what you've got to do with the potatoes is turn them every now and then. Otherwise you're going to end up burning one side and in order to cook them properly you need to just turn them, turn them, turn them so that they cook evenly all over the thing. It's not like an oven, you've got all the heat coming from one side only and not from the top so you need to turn them every now and then to distribute the heat evenly. You chuck all the strawberries into the bowl and then all you do is add a little bit of sugar, probably about a tablespoon or two, about two tablespoons, a couple of splashes of balsamic vinegar, no more than that, lemon juice. And that's just like that. And probably the juice from one half of a lemon juice, but you'll taste it. So, you know, let it marinate a bit now. Got to chuck some chili in. How hot are these chilies, Josh? Well, I'm going to ask you to taste one now, Andrew. And seeds and all. Well, I mean, that's where you get the hotness. <laughs> I happen to know that they're very hot. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> nasty. They're quite warm, eh? <laughs> But they should balance out with the sugar in the strawberries. Mm. And then all you gotta do is just toss it around a little bit. Get everything coated all. <laughs> get everything all coated. And what you'll see will happen with the balsamic vinegar is that the strawberry juice will get drawn out and end up becoming thick and syrupy and beautiful, which will be fantastic with the snook. Andrew, forgetting about the potatoes. I'll just turn them just. Should I keep it going? Okay, now it's time to do the snook. You can see the guys are getting a bit peckish now. They're starting to gather like vultures. Now these are snook, they've been flecked. Instead of cutting the fish up to the backbone, they're actually filleted so that they, the stomach is your filleting point, which is very interesting. How are the potatoes doing? Yeah, doing well, yeah. Just, uh, I think the sweet potatoes, if you'd like to come check them. Okay, how you tell when they're done is you must be able to take a knife and it just slides in. You see, no effort and it just slides in. That's done. The potatoes, not quite. When you hit the center, they're just not sliding in. Right, so the snook. Now I've pre-salted these, which essentially is just whacking a little bit of salt on them like that and leaving it for 20 minutes. It's just gonna give it a little bit of flavor and then I'm gonna rinse them off now. I just need to pat them dry. Thanks, Garth. Just with some kitchen towel. Right, so now these are patted dry. Wes, why don't you just rinse those off and pat dry for me as well. Eric, give him a hand, bro. Okay, snook is um, Dutch for water pike, which is quite like a ferocious fish. And, and snook, when you catch them, if they bite you, they've got an anti and you bleed to death. What you've got to do is actually burst their eye on the wound to stop yourself from bleeding. Weird, huh? Right, we're going to cook them now, though. And it's quite straightforward. All we need is a little bit of butter, which I'm going to melt on the fire just to get that going. And then into that butter, I'm going to add some chilies, some garlic. Actually, you know what you haven't seen yet? See what's happened with the strawberries. See how it's all juice in there now. You can see how it's starting to look a little bit more like syrup. I think it'll be lovely. Okay, back to the snook. And you know what? The snook is like a staple diet in the Western Cape. It's cheap, oily fish that everyone eats. In fact, it's known as a snake mackerel. It's a proper name. Okay, so now what we're going to do Add in the chili, the roughly chopped garlic, apricot jam, mix it all together. Okay, I'm going to do it on the grid straight away. Excuse me, Andrew, because it's going to get messy. And then you spoon on a liberal amount of the garlic, apricot jam, chili, butter, and then you rub it in, watching out for the bones. Right, and then all we have to do is throw it on the fire. Not too hot. That feels good. But well, you can hold it for about eight, nine seconds. And then fill it side down. And then we let it roasty up nicely until the apricot jam and the butter is almost golden brown underneath. And then we'll turn it. Now Dale, if you come around this side and the butternut, when you can squeeze the butternut and they're soft on the outside, they're done as well. So these can come off as well, Andrew. If you open it up and you can see how it's all soft and squishy and stuff like that, that's perfectly cooked. So let's have a look, see what's going on underneath here.
You take my job, I'm taking your job. <laughs> Check. <laughs> These are done. And finally we get to eat. Nice bones in. Don't worry. No explanation needed. Just serve and eat. Oh, you can come eat, eh? You don't have to. I'm sure you're hungry. I can't explain to you what it's like waking up on this boat. I mean, <laughs> we fall asleep last night to the sound of the water lapping up against the boat. Wake up this morning and look what it's like. I mean, it's just mind blowing. In any case, we've got a whole plan of action today. We're gonna go flower picking a bit later on. I mean, it is the first of spring. Well, it was the first of September yesterday, it's spring. I'm gonna go get some mussels down that side. And I guess just to get everyone going, I'm gonna make up a little quick roosterbrot, which is, um, it's a bread that you make on the fire. So the first thing we have to do is get the yeast activated. Take 10 grams of yeast, chuck it in a bowl, add a teaspoon of sugar, which is about three mils, some warm water. Throw some flour on top here just to seal it. And then all you've got to do is leave it in a warm spot. And this is kind of a warm spot. I'll just put it there and it'll go all frothy on top. Give it about 10 minutes. In the meantime, what we're going to do is put in 400 grams of flour. And I'm using a combination of cake flour and white bread flour. So 200 grams of each. So that, and then about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, 60 grams of butter in, and you mix those in together. Now the yeast is almost ready, so what I'm gonna do quickly is beat up two eggs. Okay. And then take a look at this, how beautiful this is, all bubbly and spongy and things. Now you add the egg into there, just give it a little twirl around there. All right, then you make a little well in the center of your flour, and then you add your yeast egg mixture. Just got to mix it all in, and this is the messy part. And uh, I think you guys are really lucky because if you haven't noticed, our background keeps changing because the boat keeps swinging as the tide pushes us around. So I think that's about enough. Coat the outside of it in sunflower oil. Then all you have to do is cover it in cling wrap, put it in a nice warm spot for 40 minutes. Now, 40 minutes has passed by, and as you can see, the dough's doubled up in size. So all we're gonna do is knock it down, let's break these up into egg-sized balls, kind of that big, and then just leave them on a the tray in a warm spot just to double up in size, and then they're gonna go up on the fire. So guys, John, Munga, Andrew, come give us a hand, you guys. Now this is quite interesting. Let's just create a hollow in the center, and then uh, like, let's put some jam in that one. Cheese and jam, cheese, chocolate. Andrew's trying a Swiss roll with it, which is also interesting. And that's the nice thing about food, is you get to play. It's like being a kid, except you get to eat afterwards. I'll sprinkle a little bit of flour on the top here, and I think we're ready. Now you want it to be hot, but not too hot, because you don't want them to burn. I mean, it must be an even, gentle heat. Now you've got to put them on for about, 10 minutes, five minutes aside, more or less. And here go Andrew's little numbers. Let's see how these look and turn out later. Now they've been on for about five minutes and you can see how they're toasting up like that, beautifully. 
Check the cheese hanging here, man. You see it? The one with the cheese. It's all dribbling out. I think these are ready, Dale. Let's take a quick squiz. Man, look at that. That's the chocolate one. And you gotta check these things out, because all you gotta do now, well, first you gotta break it open. Look at that. Bit of butter, some cheese, and I think I want a little bit of apricot jam too, and some mascarpone. Kind of like a scone in a sense, isn't it? So that's breakfast over. It's a beautiful day. We're going to let everyone chill out. And then a bit later on, I'm going to make you something I invented and I'm very proud of. It's ravioli stuffed with steamed mussels with a garlic butter and a black pepper butter, tomato sauce, asparagus and stuff. It's fantastic. But for the moment, the rest of the day is our own. So we're going to go and enjoy this. So the last bits and pieces for lunch, I'm just going to put them down and then we're about ready to go, starting off with our ravioli stuffed with steamed mussels. So we're going to get straight into it. The first part we have to make though, and that's the whole cooking is timing thing, is the tomato sauce because that needs to cook for sort of anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour. Now I'm never afraid of garlic and nor should you be, but if you're not up to the amount of garlic I'm putting into this, just use two cloves. Straight into the pot, some onion, just one onion a little bit of sweetness and then some anchovies now the trick with anchovies is they're actually going to draw the juice out of the tomatoes so that will be mind-blowing I'm cooking for 20 odd people if it's just you and someone else I would throw in probably two anchovies two tomatoes one tin of tomato later on one clove of garlic now all that we have to do is put a little bit of olive oil in and lashings because really this is what's going to make the tomato sauce rich and delicious and right I'm going to put it on let it sizzle up okay, so while that's happening I'm going to chop up some tomatoes roughly normally I put in sort of one to two tomatoes per person that are eating and just quarter them because you'll see what will happen when we cook them they'll disintegrate and then the last thing we have to do is chuck in four cans whole peeled tin of tomatoes and now this has to cook away for about 45 minutes. Okay, now that this is on the go, it's time to make the pasta. What you need is one cup of flour, bread flour. Now that's probably, that looks like, what, two cups, more or less. So two eggs. And all you're gonna do is open that up. And you mix it up until you end up with a beautiful springy yellow dough. Let me work this a bit, you'll check it out. It's been in the fridge for about 20 minutes wrapped in cellophane and it's now ready to work through the pasta machine. Start off with a ball about egg size and we'll get kitchen slaves for this. Let's um, <laughs> check it. Hello. Sorry, you've got to be polite. You shit on my shirt and we'll be talking. So, you need a ball that's about egg size like that. A little bit of flour. and put it through your pasta machine. And what you'll end up with is a stripe like that. What will happen is, well, as we change the settings down, it'll become thinner and thinner until you end up with a sheet of pasta, fresh, homemade pasta. Mr. Faber, Andrew, sorted. Now the trick behind ravioli is it's actually a, an envelope of pasta filled with something and we're going to fill it with steamed mussels and Andrew pass me those mussels. These mussels have been steamed for a couple of minutes 
in white wine. And what happens is they come out the shell like that. There's no beard on these ones, which is great, which you would normally have to remove. So straight into it, what we're going to need to do is take all of these muscles out of the shell. So, Darren, give us a hand there, if you don't mind. Brett, can you give us a hand here and you carry on doing this? If you can do it that side for me, that's great. And then I can make the garlic butter and stuff quickly. And all you're really going to do is chop up some garlic roughly. Knob of butter in there and just mash everything together so that the garlic's infused with the butter and then that'll be the dollop that'll go on the mussels. And then the black pepper is the same thing. Just crush it up, throw it into the bowl, the same thing. Knob of butter and just squash that in with the black pepper. Do you think we should put some chili in there? Yeah, I think. And some chili, why not? Pepper and chili. And just roughly because you want it to bite. and just mash it in with the butter. And that's how easy it is to make a flavored butter. And you can do the same thing with basil, marmite, bovril, any of those things you can flavor a butter with as well. So you can imagine what that's gonna taste like in the ravioli. So the minute these guys are done. But we've just got our first really thin. Right there. See that beautiful yellow color of the pasta sheet. So when they're done, we'll stuff the ravioli. How are we doing there, Is the setting done? So now that they've rolled out the pasta, we're ready to make the ravioli, and that's just a pasta envelope. Grab a sheet of pasta, and then you take some mussels. So mussels down, pat them dry. I forgot about that. And now just put the garlic butter on some of them. So what will happen is you'll end up with ravioli. You, no one will know what you're getting, in a sense. You'll taste one, it'll be garlic. You'll taste one, it'll be the black pepper and chili. And it's kind of a ravioli surprise, I guess. And then you're going to lay a sheet of pasta over it and stretch it out so it fits over everything. And start pushing out the air around each. Cut these. And then just make sure the edges are closed because you don't want any air or water to get into the muscle. And look at that. And what will happen is this excess pus, this excess flour will just shake off. And virtually by the time they rise to the surface, they're done. Now these are done. And you can see how they've got a little bit bigger as well, kind of like baking. And check here, Dale. And check how it's gone all translucent. You can see the muscle inside. It's almost in a bed with garlic. You know when you get really excited? And this is one of those moments. Pour the sauce all over everything. <laughs> you know then, you can imagine what this is going to be like now. Everyone can have a couple of strands of asparagus. This doesn't look good, man. This looks bleeping fantastic. Doesn't this look like it's going to taste? <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> it's heavy. That's <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <laughs> So dig in, there's mussels and asparagus yum, and yum, ravioli yum. stuffed with, oh, wow man, just do it. I think right. that's the easiest way. So help yourselves. So juicy. This is just the last course for you guys. We've still got lots of action going on here. I mean, what can you expect when we, where we are? The unfortunate part is we're switching off the cameras now and everyone's going to enjoy their food. Yeah, the only way you can end a show like this is for me to 
tell you that you have to go and do this. If you ever get the opportunity to go houseboating without a doubt in my mind, this is what you should be doing with a group of friends on a weekend. And that's that. Really, there's no other way to say. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. everyone. Cheers, Justin. Cheers. 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 Cheers.